One of the questions that we ask from time to time as Catholics is, how can we get more out of Mass? Because at times it's rather difficult, and I know this because I myself have thought this question, and because I've heard some of you ask this question, and because in the chapel there's a little book entitled, If Your Mind Wanders at Mass. And that book looks like it has been read a couple hundred times with the same question in everyone's mind. How do we fully participate in Mass, and how do we maximize the benefit that we receive from it? So today I'd like to suggest one way we can do that, and that's by fixing our intention at Mass. What's an intention? Well, that's the thing that you really want to offer the Mass up for. A priest always has a primary intention when celebrating Mass, and that's what the Mass is offered for. And that's where they're offered for, you know, deceased or living people. And every week there is one Mass, it's this one today, that's offered for all of you. But you also should have an intention, and it certainly doesn't have to be the same one as the priest. So maybe your intention for a Mass is that you overcome some bad habit. Maybe it's that your grandma has a holy death. Maybe it's that you pray for someone who is sick or whatever it might be. The whole idea with Mass is that when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he looked out through all of time, and he saw all the Masses and the intentions of those Masses, and he took them to himself, and he offered them along with his saving sacrifice offered once for all to the Father. And so now... We, when we come to Mass, are spiritually present there at the foot of the cross, and we get to participate in the offering of Jesus. And being present there, we want to have an intention to offer up in union with the sacrifice of Jesus. Left to ourselves, we are not worthy to offer anything at all to God. We forfeited that dignity in Eden at the fall, but restored in Christ, to communion with the Father, we may come boldly unto the throne of grace, as the letter, of the letter to the Hebrews says, bringing with us the blood of Jesus. And so the way to do that is by fixing or setting your intention at the offertory. Now, oftentimes, we think of the offertory as a time when we take up a collection and the gifts are brought forward, but Really, the, the main part of the offertory is the prayers that are said at the altar when the priest takes the gifts and begins to offer them. When the priest lifts up the paten, which is that little golden plate with the host on it, it's at that time that you want to mentally place your intention on the host. And then he goes over to the side of the altar and mixes a little bit of water with wine. And that represents our intentions mingled and united with the sacrifice of Jesus. And so at that time, too, you want to mentally think about placing your intention in the chalice to be offered up. And you can always do this before that point in Mass. Maybe when you come in, you can think about to yourself, what do I want to have as my intention for this Mass? But it's good to do it at that point, to fix your intention. And at the end of the prayers of the offertory, the priest says, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And that's the moment when we are reminded that we ought to fix our intention because we too are offering sacrifice along with the priest. And so what kind of intention? Well, as I said, there's many different kinds we could offer, and they can be a different one at every Mass. They could be a new intention. And this is sometimes called an actual intention, that's the technical term. But in addition to that, you might want to have some default intention so that if you come to Mass and you're not feeling well or whatever it might be, you might have children distracting you that day, um, you have an intention in the back of your mind even if you forget to make a new one. And this default intention could be something like the grace of divine love, or the gift of perseverance, or for a holy death. And once you've decided, this is what I want my default intention to be, then all you have to do is make an act of the will that every time you go to Mass, even if you should forget to make an intention, 
that this is what the Mass will be offered for. For example, that you have a holy death. So that way, when it comes, if you make it past the consecration, you say, oh, what was I thinking today? You know that you are covered and you have offered that Mass for your default intention, sometimes called a habitual intention. So after the offertory, God the Father is looking down and he is pleased with what he sees, but what does he see? Well, he sees on the paten a host and he sees in the chalice some wine, but all along with that, he sees all the intentions that we bring to the altar to be offered alongside the bread and the wine. And then, of course, at the consecration, it's completely transformed. And now the father is seeing his son. And his son is holding up those intentions to him right then. Jesus takes our intentions upon him. As we heard in today's second reading, St. Paul tells us, it is Jesus who intercedes for us at the right hand of God. And since God the Father is so pleased with his Son, he answers our prayers. Although the effect of our prayers also depends on the strength of our faith and hope and charity with which we bring and offer up at the Mass. In our first reading today, we see an example of intention and sacrifice in the story of Abraham and Isaac. And it's rather a difficult story to hear because God asks Abraham to offer up his beloved son, his only son, as an oblation, and Abraham obeys because he has faith and he trusts in the promises of God. And Abraham's intention is to set aside his own desires, his own will, and to do the will of God. And in the end, Isaac is spared, and the ram that has its uh, horns caught in the thicket is sacrificed. So that interior offering or sacrifice of Abraham was accepted, but the exterior way it came about was transferred to the ram. And this event prefigures the saving redemption of Jesus, who is the beloved son of the Father. He became the sacrificial lamb and allowed himself to be bound and offered to set us free. And this is the basis of our confidence, that God the Father handed over his son for our sake. And that's what we heard also today in the beautiful words of St. Paul. He said, He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? If God has given us his son, why will he not give us everything else indeed? So, It pleases God to answer our prayers in accordance with his eternal plan, especially when those prayers are united with the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross offered once for all. And perhaps the best way to do this is by fixing your intentions at the offertory of every Mass. In this way, we maximize the benefit we receive and truly participate in these awe-inspiring rites when we join with Jesus to offer his sacrifice to the Father in the Holy Spirit And in that way, we can truly participate and benefit most of all from this Holy Mass.